When the Lord spoke to the church in Philadelphia and said, I'm going to open doors unto you because you have a little strength and because you keep my words. What is it that he was saying? He was talking about two principal criteria that will enable doors by God to be opened unto us. The first criteria, criterion rather, is humility. The second criterion is holiness. In 1 Peter chapter 5, and we are closing now. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 and verse 6. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. The young man believes that he has strength. The young man believes that he knows more than every other person. And so he's saying to the young man who believes that he knows more, he says, submit yourselves to the elders. The man who thinks that he has money, he says, go and submit yourself even to the elders. Go and submit yourself to God. Go and submit yourself to the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Be clothed with humility. That is something that God is, is drawn to. When God sees a humble person, he is drawn to that person. I think we've, we've discussed this many, many, maybe one or two years ago. When we're talking about um, King Manasseh. Manasseh was a very wicked king. And because of his wickedness, God allowed Babylon to come and take him away. I'm sorry, I think I was Assyrian. The enemy came and took Manasseh away and threw him in jail. And the Bible says that Manasseh humbled himself greatly before the Lord. And God looked at Manasseh that he was humble. Don't forget the eye of God is running to and fro, looking for somebody that is humble, somebody whose heart is loyal to God. God was drawn to Manasseh. And do you know what God did? He got Manasseh released, returned back to Judah, to Jerusalem, and retained his kingship. Because of his humility. And we saw that Manasseh changed completely. Everything that he had put in place, he broke them down. So that God cannot be glorified. God, the Bible says, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. If we can but be humble, you will see God. Walking on your behalf. The problem is so many times we are strong. We are stronger than God. Let me use that expression. We are so strong we tell God forget it. I can do this thing on my own. That's why many people don't pray again. The only time they pray is when they think a matter is difficult. When they think the matter can be handled. Like the man who has 10 million dollars in his account. He doesn't, he doesn't pray. A church has enough money. So they don't pray to God on what they should do with it. They just go ahead, buy land, go ahead, build this, build that, and start raising money, and start doing things, and God does not know what they are doing. In verse 6, it says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humility is a major criterion if God is going to open doors unto us. Finally, holiness. In Hebrew chapter 12, Hebrew chapter 12, verse 14, the Bible says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Without the life of holiness, which is simply put, obedience to the word of God, obedience to anything that God is asking us to do, that is a life of holiness. Whether it is convenient or is not convenient, whether it is going to be beneficial to us or beneficial to others or is going to hurt us or harm us, as long as you are living a life of holiness, you are asking God to open doors unto you. I think it's Psalm 24. Was it Psalm 24 or Psalm 15? Where the Lord was asking, who shall ascend to the hill of God? He said, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. You have sworn and the thing is going to, after you are strong, you realize that this thing is going to be hurtful to you. But you refuse to change. You are asking God to come and help you. That is a life of holiness. A life that is tied to everything that God wants done. A life that is clean. A life that is pure. 
a life that is following the injunctions of the word of God. That's a life of holiness. To the man who is humble and the man who is holy, God will open the door unto them. Usually, humility and holiness, they go hand in hand. It is strange to find somebody that you say is humble and is not holy. It is equally strange to find somebody that is holy and is not humble. The two of them go hand in hand. They are found in a vessel. And that is why God will open the door unto such a man who is both humble and holy. That was why God opened the door unto the church in Philadelphia. Because even though they had little strength, they were humble and they were holy. They kept the word of God. As difficult as it may have seemed to be, they kept the word of God. If you read further down, you discover that there was a synagogue of Satan in that city. And that synagogue, God said, I will bring them to bow down to you. So it is possible that that synagogue had been ridiculing these people because they were few in number and this synagogue was mighty. The synagogue was probably richer than they and they were wondering, what are these people doing? What kind of church is it that they are doing? Do they, are they sure they know what they are doing? You better come and join Judaism and leave that thing that you, that you say you are doing. And, and God said, I will make them to come and bow down before you. I will make them to come and worship at your feet. I will make them to come and recognize that I am your God. And that you are, I'm the one that you are serving. And they, Satan, that they are serving. So today, as we close, I want us to pray to God. To ask the Lord to come and help us to be humble by nature. Not, not humble in, 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 trying to, in trying to be deceitful. But humble by nature. That God should come and help us to lead a life of holiness. Whatever is in our lives that is not allowing us to, to do the word of God as we should do it. That God should come and take it away. Let's go ahead and pray now.